Hi, I'm Debbie Culver. Hi, my name is Bruce Culver. Uh, I, we live in Bernie, Texas. Um, I remember the day that we uh, went to a neurosurgeon's office with the results of our full MRI scan. And we were sitting in there, and he threw out those two foreign words to us that was Chiari malformation and syringomelia. I guess when I first found out about Kaya's condition, I, uh, I didn't know anything about it. She ended up in the hospital naturally doing a decompression surgery the first time. And um, I was very optimistic, and uh, I always am, but it, it tends to change you after a while. Putting such a young baby under surgery uh, is very scary. We, we had the surgery. She went to the PICU, and within three days was sent home. I then went out of town for a, a business meeting or a training seminar and got a call that they were going back to the ER that her head was swelling up a little bit and not to worry, they sent her home that night. When I got back on Sunday, it had swelled up about the size of a softball on the top of her head, so we had to take her back in. And uh, the patch they had put on had actually sprung a leak, I guess. Well, that day when she came out of surgery, they rolled her up in her bed and she was intubated at that point. And, and they said we were going to keep her intubated for a few days to let her heal. So that was the difference from the first time. And, and that's when it really hit me that, okay, this seems to be a little bit more serious. So she was 22 days in intubation. They went to extubate her or to wake her up. And they pull everything out, the breathing tube, the feeding tube, and wake her up. Um, we're finally able to hold her and hug her and talk to her. Uh, first time I could actually lift her up and held her in my arms and she seemed fine. She was breathing heavily and you could feel all the stuff in her lungs kind of loosening up from finally breathing on her own. Um, and that's all we could do that day. We were just holding her and so glad that we could finally see her. Um, about two hours into it, she starts breathing heavy, heavier. Um, you can almost see a little bit of scariness in her eyes that, okay, I'm not feeling so good. Um, the doctors tell us to put her back down on the bed and, and, and see if they can kind of help her breathe a little easier. And at that point, um, just looking at her and looking in her eyes, I knew that something's wrong. This is, this is not right. And um, she uh, basically took her last breath in front of us at that point. So um, they rushed us out of the room and told us that we need to intubate her again. She's not breathing. I can't describe what I was feeling at that point. Um, I, I thought it was over. I thought that um, my husband and myself had um, been a part of um, ending her life. And, and we got, we kind of, you know, we got past that and we got to go home and we, we, we got put on the antibiotic for uh, a month where we had to do uh, injections and methadone injections to wean her off the morphine. So she had a pick line in her arm that we had to wean her off of. And we thought that we were about wrapped up with everything. We thought that, you know, we were going to have a good prognosis and we went, we were just waiting to go back for our, our next MRI. Three months later, the fluid had completely covered her spinal cord, and she had a large cernix to where she was having a hard time walking again. That's when she started having ticks in her eyes, and she was still a very clumsy, tripping and falling, uh, a lot of headaches, and she wasn't doing as well as um, she should have. And we uh, realized that we probably need to, to, to do something. So we decided to get a second opinion uh, in another city, so, so we, 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 we drove about an hour away. It was great to find somebody that you know, knew something about it. So. And the first thing he says is, 
well, first thing we need to do is fix this Chiari. And I said, no, no, she, her, the Chiari's fixed. We're having a problem with the syrinx. And he goes, no, that, there's no flow. So he, he recommended that we do surgery there. He said that the, the syrinx is still there. The syringomelia is still there. It's very bad. It, it needs to happen quick. And he rushed us in in a week or two into the hospital. He did uh, the decompression surgery and did a rib graft and placed rib underneath her cerebellum for support. We were done. Um, he said the surgery went well. He was very, a very modest uh, doctor. We're not always so lucky. You know, the first one we thought was going to be good, and, and it wasn't. But this time, I really feel like with taking the shunt out and the way they did the surgery, that Kaya's healed. I think God's put his hands on her, and, and she's healed, and we've, we've done it. Kaya will wake up in the morning and come so happy, smiling at us, saying, Mom, Dad, I had a great morning, you know, and, and to hear uh, a three-year-old or a four-year-old uh, come out and say something like that is, I mean, it really gets you, you know, it's not something that, uh, Kaya is great. She has a beautiful smile. She's very, very intelligent. Most of all, through all of this, just her strength and power uh, has amazed me this whole time. Well, she has always been our sunshine, regardless. I don't think that Kaya ever really had many good days as a baby. She just turned four and she has had very many good days, one after another. And it almost seems like a surprise to her too that she can actually wake up and say that I'm feeling good today. This is a good day.